storyboard as a result of that. One of the cool things with the markers, if you hit it fast enough with a spray bottle, you'll get some of that color to bleed. And I like that effect a lot. Strictly speaking, I don't see a lot of other um, people using acrylic markers doing this. It's just one of those little, I think, fun techniques that you can use. Sometimes it's, if you, you gotta catch it quick enough. When, it, when you're working on a uh, prime canvas, it, uh, it will bleed a lot easier, longer. So what this, kind of markers are you using today? That was acrylic markers. That was that one was Posca, and that was the Uno. Now I'm going to take a paint stick. And Mark. Brunzel, you saw Brunzel now has isn't it? Brunzel has paint sticks now. Royal Talents has paint sticks. Uh, Art for Life says she uses watercolor markers. Yeah. Well, I have those too. I have. Um, these are really nice. I'm not going to use them today, but these are Echo Line. They're really nice, fantastic. Royal Palace has those. I do a lot of that on my smaller work, so I'll, uh, I'll often use those. I'm a little disheveled today. I can't remember where I put everything. That's the brand she uses. Oh, the Echo Line? Yep. Nice. Who was that? Arts for Life over on TikTok. She's been here a few times, I think. All right. Welcome back. Spooky Forever is here. Friendly reminder from the social media manager, share our feed. Yeah. <laughs> so, very gestural right now, and I'll add structure as I go. I'm not really looking to have um, a lot of structure yet. Thanks for the follow, B. Now, I'm going to take. This is hard to read these little these little things. This is the uh, Prussian blue. Let me see, lunar blue, lunar blue from Daniel Smith watercolors. I'm using mostly Daniel Smith today for the watercolors. I love their pigmentation. It's really really excellent. Oh, the hue saturation on those is just. It's, it's going to knock your socks off here in a minute. You can see I'm putting it right on. Right on it. What? That's just crazy. You can't do that. I just did. <laughs> so I'm throwing some of that on there. And then I'm going to do a little bit. This is another acrylic marker. I'm going to kind of draw some lines in here. I'm trying to connect the color from this other side into this one here. What might not be obvious is that this entire wall to the right has already been painted. <laughs> He's got about I feel the same distance of paper on the other side to fill out. Oh, easy. Actually, we're only probably a quarter of the way through, I think. Well. Okay, so now I'm going to spray, spritz this down with the sprayer. And you can see already that watercolor is just going all crazy happy. He's only spraying water right now. Just the water. I'm going to take one of my big palette knives. Bigger, bigger palette knife. Watch what happens with this stuff. It's just cool. So we can work this into the pulling the color, moving the color around at this point. Go back into where I left the color, like here. And I can pull it out some more. Uh, I don't know if I'm not having any issues with connectivity on my end. Scrub that color in there too. So my my table is not quite big enough. I think this is 52 inches. This paper. Yeah. <laughs> So, I think you ran into that problem the last time. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to work with. I, I was, I'm was i going to build a, a bigger uh, table at some point, but I'm holding it from the bottom. But you know what? You can't let you can't let these physical impediments really uh, keep you from creating, right? I used to have all these excuses for not working. I don't have the right tool. I don't have the right, you know, such and such, or the desk isn't good. 
my lighting's bad. You know, I had every excuse in the book not to be creating artwork. Oh, he did. <laughs> on a consistent <laughs> basis. And that was one of the biggest things, the biggest changes for me was just taking um, my that attitude and changing it and going, it doesn't matter what I have. I can go to the junk drawer and make art. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. You can make that art anywhere. This is too small for my brother. <laughs> Speaking of inadequate supplies to this. <laughs> well, there's just most of things today. We've had a crazy couple weeks around here. I think it's been see, really I feel like we say that every step. No, yeah, but this one was really this one was really busy. So now I can work that in a little bit more. So for those of you who have just joined us and have never been here before, we do this every week on Saturday mornings, 10.30 a.m. Central. And you can always see our other videos backlogged and recorded on um, mostly IGTV, but most complete record. So I'm just, at this point, laying down some base colors and some different kinds of uh, if you will, uh, yeah, background color. That's basically what I'm adding. <laughs> I'm now I'm just using a chalk. This is a chalk. And I'm just laying out some more blockage, blocking. Almost like you're doing a theater thing. And then I'm dragging my hands along with it to create some, some uh, shading. As I go. Uh, Tim Wright wants to know, do you have a plan before you start painting? A lot of times I do, uh, more and more right now, but sometimes I just need to loosen up. I, I've, I've got a, you guys can't see it all, but there's literally 12 new paintings going right now, and I have reached my capacity to, to analyze and, and structure and everything. So when I when I get to that point, my, my goal at that point is to loosen up. So that's what I'm doing basically. I decided to work this big piece of paper because I knew it would give me a chance to to re reset, if you will. And and I expect that will lead to some really interesting um, things on this other pieces, these other pieces that I'm trying to fix. You know, kind of like this one over here, for example. I'm just using my hand to rub that around. You know, water. So there's a lot of drawings, a lot of detail work that's going on in these. I don't think you put lights in the way on. But anyway, so there's just a ton of detail going into a lot of it right now. A little more Daniel Smith in there. Do this a little differently this time. Use my brush. I don't really know what I'm doing on this one. You asked me, Kristen, if I was sure I wanted to do this today, but I do because I think it'll help me loosen up, you know? Yeah. It's 140 pound paper. It's a hot press, so it's really soaking in a lot of the, the water media. It's also getting more wrinkly, and, and uh, I like that fact, really. Working wet in the wet now. Take this one. Yeah. Oh, she's standing on a curious ladder now, guys. <laughs> oh, it should be on. Go the right way. I forgot about the heater going. I don't know why, but I wanted to. I, I think I wanted to draw some plants because it was just the cacophony of spring things coming out. Because uh, I was ready for spring. Everybody, everybody up here was ready for spring. Yeah, for sure. Well, now that the glass is cold air. Yeah, it, it cools off. The, and then it'll set. Ah. 
Right, who out there is painting with us today? <laughs> Somebody has to be painting out there. The biggest issue when you work this large is that it takes a while to develop the piece. And so you, you can start with bold, broad strokes like this, and you can start to work in um, more and more of the, the structure, more and more of the uh, Philomena wants to know, is there any basic rule for abstract? <laughs> that, no, that's a good question. Basic rule for abstract. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess would be my short answer to that. No, there's no basic rule to abstract. Fred Wellen is watching and painting today. I, if you wanted to be more specific, maybe ask me a, a little more specific question in regards to that. Um, sometimes if it's too broad, with great reasons. <laughs> it, it's, you know, the, the thing with abstract is that anything really can go. I, I tend to not. Okay, so if you want to make pretty pictures, and I, and I don't mean that to sound derogatory because I, I, I don't. There's extremely talented um, artists that make beautiful make pictures. I've been moving in a direction, once I've learned some of the basics of material use, uh, I'm going into more political type of things, uh, more social economic stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where we've been, where I've been going. Um, because I, I, I just had to, I, I couldn't not anymore. <laughs> that was uh, acrylic green, right? It, it's yeah, it's a water, it has a watered down acrylic green. And then this is, a, this is Amsterdam gold. Hi Nancy, nice to see you again. So, and you can see the, one of the cool things of pulling the acrylic through this water and the different um, spots of viscosity, if you will, in the paper is that you get some really interesting effects. Well, watch what happens as I go through here. Yeah, it almost gives it like a gold leaf, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. A spectrofix. Spectrofix? Fixative. Is oh, yeah. They are sealed at the end. Yeah. Great people there. We've got a good product. So they had um, Degas fixative is a good way if you're going to keep working it. And then final fix is a good spray to put over it. Remember, when you're doing this, when you're working with this stuff, when you're working with this stuff, do thin layers of it and be sure to spring for the more expensive bottle because. <laughs> If you, if you spray it out of the, of the, of the a regular atomizer bottle, it just splatters, you know, if, you're, if you have delicate water media, and particularly if you're working in pastel or charcoal, 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 charcoal. <laughs> so really light, light, really light. Um, and so you get, especially if you're getting the hang of it and build the layers up. The stuff really works nicely, but you got to build up those layers. Yes, the watercolor is mixing with the color. Yep. They're both basically water media. The difference is with acrylic because it, it's water soluble, but the plasticizers in it, you know, the acrylic part of it, um, that the pigment is floated in, it, it will become non permeable to water, right? But when I thin it out like that, I treat it like a, like a watercolor, right? So you're just going to be looking at, okay, I've added this. Um, a lot of water to the acrylic, and, and it does thin out the polymer emulsifiers. I think I said that right. Mm -hmm. And so that will make it a little less durable, and that's why you have to then treat it and seal it like you would water media, like watercolors or pastels. I'm tempted to add more of that gold in there, but I'm going to keep working a little bit more first. This my white, my white is more gray now than white. <laughs> and this will, we're not going to finish this piece today. There's, there's like zero doubt about that. What we're going to be doing is laying down some groundwork and then 
um, I'll be building it up. And periodically, I'm going to roll this out literally <laughs> and play with it a little more with, so you guys can see kind of what I'm up to. Um, but right now, I'm really. If you've got to choose a spot. <laughs> just like those squirrels outside. I don't know how to choose a site, man. Spot. Let's see. Let's see. Where was I going? Someone is asking about abstract if there's wrong or right. Oh, so go back to that question that they were asking about with the is there a right or a wrong, right? Yeah. Uh, way to do or there, there really isn't, but there are some basic rules. You could go the one third rule, which is like, okay, fine. So, you know, you're taking and dividing your your structure or your structures up into one third, two thirds, and that gives you that figure ground relationship that uh, people look for. And I, I think that's okay. I I try to actually move more towards maybe a ten percent or a quarter. So I'm really trying to create more tension in the pieces. That's a deliberate act, I think. So we were talking about pretty pictures versus, you know, um, not so pretty. Weren't we? Yes. Yeah. So oh, thanks. I think that's one of the reasons my my work doesn't sell, perhaps, as often in a straightforward, you know, kind of, kind of gallery. It, it really takes more context. Context, yes. more, more of a dedication from the, the viewer that's watching it, right? looking at it. It is watching it. It's a narrative. It changes over time. There we go. I'm liking that. It's cute to hear him playing out there. Yeah, I know. He got himself dressed to go outside. Did he? I was like, yeah, she's coming. She's going to be outside. And he's like, and I, I Went to get a bottle of water, I turned around, and he's already he's outside with boots on and a jacket. And I was like, what the? <laughs> so I gotta be a little careful because otherwise I can rip this paper. I just stopped myself because I was gonna get aggressive with the metal. Yep, but gotta know. You gotta know when to back off of that a little bit. Unfortunately, that's a learned. <laughs> you gotta learn it on the job. I have a rubber one just for this occasion. So I, I wanted to kind of have a cacophony of nature and spring bursting forth and some green, but you still have a, you know, some browns and th this transformation between uh, of the spring, the winter, spring. We have a season back in Michigan and I, it's the same everywhere, but we used to call it uh, mud season, right? Yep. So that was our season <laughs> this time of year. Actually, we're just coming out of it, thankfully, everywhere. Just blending some of these in into the other panel. So there's some connection. This is a big piece of paper. I've forgotten how big this thing is. <laughs> I've already ripped down here, though. Somebody wants to use fuchsia. Fuchsia, huh? Um, it's mm -hmm. funny you mentioned that whoever said that because I do have. I have a, I don't have fuchsia, but I have magenta. I was considering this. I'm still not sure about it. I do have a bright pink though. We should get a instead of fuchsia, let's let's throw a ridiculously fluorescent neon pink in there. <laughs> let's see now. What are uh, we question about what kind of gold was that? Was that Royal Talons? That was the gold? Amsterdam Amsterdam um, gold. Uh, where, where? Amsterdam from their standard series. The acrylic speciality is Amsterdam. Mm. This is their hot, hot neon. They call it a reflex um, rose. I'm just looking to see where I want to put it though. Where should I put it? I kind of want to contrast way over here on the side. I'm going to put a little bit over here if I can reach it. Don't, don't wrinkle the paper. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be cool over the watercolor to watch this. This should be neat. Should be. Optimal word should be. What happened? Yeah, that's fun. I actually don't think he has any silver left. 
think all we have left is mica powder. Silver. Paint. Oh, silver paint. I don't think you have any left. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any of the, the silver right at the moment. What I do have is silver markers, and I have been using those periodically. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Palette knives and water media. I say, I'm a rebel. I don't know a lot of people that do water media with palette knives. I'm sure they do. There must be some. But most people are using brushes, a lot of brushes. Kristen knows how much I love working with brushes. I used to think it was just because he didn't like to spend the money, but then I came to realize he doesn't like washing them. I don't like washing brushes. <laughs> If you don't have a brush, you can use your hands. I'm going to put a little sunshine in here, spread that out with my handy, my handy brush. <laughs> Getting a little silly today. Look at that, just goes such a long way, doesn't it? person uses a catalyst wedge and old gift cards. Nice. I like to, that's the stuff I want to hear when we're, you know, when we're doing these things is what do people use? Non-traditional methods of, of use. Shit, it's getting really. The last two weeks, the sounds, it's been, we've been really into sounds. <laughs> yeah, it's been something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have loop earplugs. Which those of you on TikTok know that they are, and they've been in use. A lot. <clears throat> so that was the Daniel Smith Aussie Red Gold. Really brilliant, brilliant gold you can see. Love it. I'm just using my hand to, to move it around. And it doesn't take much. It really doesn't take much to uh, get it to do something. Kind of a moody music there, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, it, I put it on funk. This is funk again. Yep. I, a lot of you probably can't hear the music in the background, but it's mostly for me. But it's canned music. 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 Yes, the metallic yeah. gold. So just using my fingers, I can use uh, build some structure into some of these areas. It's some kind of one of the themes on this piece has been. The, the man's influence on all of this stuff. And so I, I'm definitely putting those sorts of concepts in this piece as I go. And it just, it's evolving with time. This, is, this piece just evolves. It's going to transform again. I'm working like 17 feet long is what the total, uh, total piece will be. So it's, it's, it's a bit. Got a question for you. Yeah. Would watercolor work on a standard canvas too? It does. Uh, the absorbency rate, I think, is a little bit harder to do. I, uh, it's not quite as nice. I, I do a lot of that on mine. I, I, I've, I've seen you seem to use it. Uh, I don't know if that one has anybody. So I have done it. Um, the, you're going to find it won't behave the same. That's what I'm struggling to say today. But you can get an absorbent ground and paint on it. So check that out. Um, not everybody sells that. You might have to look around at some of the big manufacturers. Um, check with Royal Talon, see if they have absorbent ground. I can't remember right now. I, I, I think they might. If not, check, try some of your other uh, uh, mediums, you know, places that medium that sell that. That's what I'm trying to struggle to say there. I'm sorry. I'm, having, I'm so into that kind of I'm having trouble with language now. <laughs> <laughs> and as this piece sets up, uh, dries out, I will go come back in with the spray. I'll use the, the Vega fixative. And I'll fix this and then I'll go over it with some markers and some other media. Stop of the morning, Babylon. Nice to see you this morning. Okay. 
All right, it's starting to look a little better there. Eh? I feel like I want to put more of that orange in. Like it needs to be up in there a little bit, doesn't it? Can't reach that far. <laughs> it, Don't rip your paper at the bottom. I'm trying not to. It's hard. Usually I just come around to the other side and work it. Not really possible. I'm sorry, that's boy. Now maybe I'll do that because. Can I get it around there? Yeah. I'm coming around. Two feet from the table. There we go. Yeah. Hardboard's a great media if you need to use it. Uh, let's see, at the ground. Is uh, is this a commission? Or no. Do you have plans on how you're going to display 17 feet? No. <laughs> I, the, the people that we work with for framing, uh, which is in, in Duluth, many of you know it, but it's uh, Lizard's Art Gallery and Framing, and they have done an amazing job with some of my other complicated pieces. And so they're going to be doing, figure, helping me figure out how to do it, but we we're not really sure yet. Uh, I figure we'll figure it out as we go. I'm trying to, we're talking about somebody asking again that thing earlier with uh, about how rules of, occur, of abstract and any of the painting rules will apply, which one of them is repeat your color, you know, create a sense of balance or discord, right? So, Repeating that orange around there is adding a, some some little bit of um, soothing, soothing statement. So people are going to, at a certain level of the physiological response of it, are going to go, oh, there's color there that matches on the other side. But they're not thinking that. They're not going through their head and go, oh, yeah, there's, there's orange there and there's orange there and there's orange there. It now forms a triangle of oranges. So triangles are a really good structure to play with, too. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, structure with, with uh, triangles that is an easy, easy aesthetic to work with. Can you buy stretched, unprimed canvases? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, any of your big suppliers should have it. I, I like to work on big canvas, too. So if you go back to some of our other videos, you'll see that. Um, where we where we use some unprimed raw canvas and done these big tapestry pieces, they're, they're really cool actually. Don't you think? I mean, they're really cool. Yeah. yeah. Go through the maze, tripods. Back to the front. Oh, that's a little better. <laughs> I'm still, you know, still working on the composition. We still have some pop pop colors popping. We've got kind of this green foliage thing happening. We've got some structure that looks like might be some hills. And then of course we've got some other buildings and things that are starting to infiltrate the piece as well. And that's that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about building up those layers, building up the narrative as we go. And that's the fun part, right? The fun yeah. part is the narrative to me. I mean, the process of this is, is a lot of fun too. I mean, the process of building these canvases and these stories up, it's like a storyboard really, a movie storyboard. That's kind of fun. It is fun. It's not kind of fun. It is really fun. Let's see, I've got some orange. I'm gonna put some orange in here. Just a little bit of scribble. You know, it's, flowers are scribbly, right? Flowers are scribbly. Flowers are scribbly. You just went and it's windy. <laughs> I'm adding some scribbly flowers in here. Actually, if you take this, you know, time really time on a, on a camera and record a flower and where it's moving, and then you took the line and sped it up. Yeah, that would be kind of squiggly. Anyway, for some reason there's a small field of orangish flowers down here. This is dandelion. Rembrandt. This is Rembrandt soft pastels. <laughs> Looks very kind, Filomino, but I trust me, he'll ruin it in a minute. Oh! <laughs> hey. There's always a point where I'm like, that's great! <laughs> and then, then he'll do something and I won't like it as much. However, like four steps later, he'll do something else and I fall back in love with it. 
yeah, there, there's a, and that's part of the layering. This is what we talk about all the time. The hashtag we say, what is it? Create without fear. That's right. Even our four year old. He walks around going. Create without fear. And he comes in the studio <laughs> paint with me. So we created that here. But so now a hint of a flesh tone, starting to get some idea that there's human involvement in these things. Better or worse, it's there. But anyway, you have to you have to be you have to push and feel confident. Even if you get it wrong, you can just keep painting. There is a point where you can do something to death and you gotta wipe it all out, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just get the <laughs> gesso. I have it by the gallon for this reason. <laughs> and just <laughs> and just dump it on the piece and go, yeah, see ya. <laughs> and so well, there is that there is that aspect here. You just there's no salvaging a piece. I'm trying to think who it was this week. One of one of our friends there that has a big account. Can't remember who it was. It was Patty, or it was gosh, who was it? I'll think of think of who it was. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder too for everybody, real quick, make sure you are using your two-factor authentication. Double check. We discovered this week. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't really post about it. It's really weird. We, we, we had her, all of that on her, on specific to Facebook and Instagram primarily, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if TikTok has for it, but um, two factor authentication. We thought we had it on. We did have it on. We did. We did. And, but we, some changes happened and they rolled out something new or some, some update happened. And I went in and I realized. I don't even know how I discovered it. It wasn't on anymore. So we had to go back through and turn everything on. Yep, that was a scary 10 minutes. Yeah, so we thought we'd gotten hacked like our friend Patty there had gotten hacked. And so we were really frightened because we've been under attack for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, and this is how we make our, our livelihood a big part of it, having those accounts. Two factor, everybody. Don't click on anything you don't recognize. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, if it's too good to be true, don't click on it. <laughs> it's, uh, click on this link and send it back to me. Don't click on it. Well, that's a that one's a new. If it, I want to buy an art, but it's for my my wife's anniversary, and I don't want her to know that you take checks. Do not take that check. Well, yeah, and there's and the representatives is going to come pick it up from. Me. Yeah, yeah. That was that was the other telltale sign is that they're going to pick it up from. Me. Yeah. If they want to use a shipper you've never heard of. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so what they do is it's it's a charge back and they get your money on that case. That's an old one that's been around a long time. Yeah, but if you're a new artist and you're just starting, it's yeah. new to you because they're still doing it. It's it's really kind of tragic that they that they now I got a really hot. This is a this is actually a favorite Castillo uh, gelato. And oh, the gelato. The yeah. limoncello. This is limoncello. It Ooh. Really good. Well, it is a drink. Yeah, I'd like to have some limoncello right now. It's really easy to get really soused on that, though. I yeah. gotta warn you. Anybody who hasn't had it, and you walk somewhere and they say, You want a limoncello? And you say, Sure. And you it don't sounds like personal experience that how, I didn't know where how I was alcohol it is. And you're like, they're like, We made it in our own kitchen. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Look, well, can't be that bad. And then three drinks later, you're like, I can no longer function as a human with legs. <laughs> This is clearly, guys, this is a story I had not heard, so this is new to me. This must have been a... Realist. I was a real estate agent at the time. Oh, that was... <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Way tastier than homemade wine. Yeah. Still pretty, homemade. Pretty Still good stuff. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> there was an Italian restaurant back in Toski there that made their own, if you recall. Yep. Um, I don't remember. Villa, Villa, Villa something. Well, it's like every other channel. Villa El sure. Restaurante. It's, it's a villa. <laughs> villa. It's definitely part of Italian restaurant names, right? Yeah. Hi, one old guy. Welcome. <laughs> so I threw, threw some bright colors in. This previous pa panel that I kind of shown sort of at the beginning is really dark and moody. And I wanted to kind of give some hope <laughs> as we progress through this. So there's going to be, there's going to be ups and downs this like in real life, right? So you have really good days and you have really crappy days. And that always seems to hopefully work out in the end. And you, there's some balance there. So I'm trying to kind of repeat that concept. So here's another tool I like to print. Cranda. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's 
the Scottish crayon. It's close, it's Swiss. Swiss crayon. Uh, so these are fun. They're water soluble. A lot of you use these for mark making and really, really, really nice for that reason. But, so I'm just going to kind of do some marks up here. And I can go in and use the water if I want. We had a lot of people join us recently. Just so you know, this is 140 pound hot press cotton rag paper on a 17 foot roll. And we're yes. using a lot of water media and thin out acrylic today. Yeah, so I'm building up the, the, the structure, I'm building up now the, the layers, and I'll just keep adding to it. And when we when we sign off today, I'll probably still be working on it, and tomorrow I'll still be working on it. So that I'm working in sections, partially because I just don't have the room to lay the whole thing out. Eventually, I'll put it up on the wall here and do the final uh, treatments to the whole thing and start connecting the piece using other, water, you know, the acrylic markers particularly, it's one of my favorites. And pencils from Brunzel, Brunzel pencils, I love those things. And then the Rembrandt pastels that I use a lot of too. And those things will really help me define and clarify the overall 17 feet of paper. <laughs> but I, I was going to do, you know, when I came out, I was going to do a couple of two by two by twos today. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do something fun for me. This one was for me, guys. A little tail wagging song. Yeah. It's all for you, Mom. Uh, that below. Only for you. <laughs> hey, this is a and know, fam family show. Family show. <laughs> There's a lot of things in nature growing out there, starting to grow, and I'm going to put it in here too. We've got some reeds coming up into here. It's just a nice way of doing mark making. And it, it kind of it looks like a mess still, and it is a mess in a lot of areas. You build it up, you build it up, you build that structure, you block things in, you take things out. What time is it? Uh, it is 11.15. Okay. And this is, this is a, um, what is this? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, so that color blue is actually a golden, old, old bottle of golden blue paint. That blue here. That was from Mom's Blues, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's um, probably Windsor Blue. Windsor Blue. It might, be, it might be Windsor Blue mixed in with some um, ultramarine, it looks like. That could be. So Windsor Blue from Windsor Newton Paints. Yeah. I think that's what it is. So I still I, have some quite a bit of her paint. I, so. I also want to stress that on the phone, it punches it up to be a little more bright than it actually is. It's a bit more muted in real life. Yeah. And I don't have any filters turned on. It's just the nature of the nature of the technology, yeah. I guess. They, they're like, it's better if it's more saturated, except when you're like trying, trying to change art true. and you're like, no, it's actually not that cute. <laughs> You're very welcome. So there I put in some of this uh, pastel, soft pastel, and this is from Derwent. Derwent. I knew I could figure it out eventually. And I'm putting it in, and then I'm taking the gesso that I laid down earlier, and I'm just using my hands now to soften up those lines and create some shadow. This take, like, it takes time. Give yourself the luxury of time when you're creating. I know that seems like an obvious thing to say. But it's something I've had to work with a lot. I work on a lot. It's, I've had to give myself luxury of time. But before, my paintings were very frenetic. And there's still a frenetic aspect of it. It's my ADD kicking in. <laughs> you know, squirrel kind of thing that I got going on. But um, the, the, th the biggest luxury I've given myself lately is, is time. And reminding myself that I have time to create. You know what I mean? It's it's not like you have to be rushed all the time to do it. 
I really want to block some of this out. Either make one darker or one lighter, create a definite division in here of the one side to the other. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take you want to see from the, other side. the white gesso. I'm going to take you around. And allow that to. Kind of nice to see it from the right side. Yeah, it changes the change flavor. Really. Mm -hmm. You guys have been watching me paint upside down for years now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been painting right side up. No, upside down. I'm painting upside down. I don't know. I'm a little goofy today. It was a long, long week. And yet again, we have paintings to unload from the trailer. Yeah. We did. Getting really good at loading and unloading things. <laughs> yeah, we had a show for an awards banquet, which was really fun to do. And I was very honored to be a part of that. What was the exact name of the award ceremony? The Depot Foundation Arts and Culture Awards. Oh, thanks. Wander Smith, much appreciated. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, it's a little different from this side, isn't it? Scraping through the layers a little bit, moving the color around in the process. Almost like a crystallization, crystal structure, crystalline, crystalline structure. I talk good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bit. hi, Progress. I'm sorry I ruined your name. I'm a Midwestern American. I try. <laughs> you always so you always are so apologetic to that. I think, I think that's nice. Somebody's name is important. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Must be like Bigfoot outside. Can make a Bigfoot again. Hopefully, the neighbors aren't trying to nap right now. Oh, it's only 11 30. Yeah, they might not even be up yet. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> tired, like. Ooh, now we've entered some strange tech. Are you planning to time travel over? Yes. Any second. If I disappear, I'll talk to you guys in another couple of hours. Oh, you want to see this one? It's the painting here I see this thing. That one? I've learned a debate about how much farther to go on that. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and look at that might have to warn them not to be too obnoxious. Well, mostly I don't want, want the neighbors to feel. You know, at least it doesn't sound like axe murdering going on out there, at least. All right, hey, it's, something's happening here. You know. Yeah, you know, from this side, it definitely feels like more of a nature scape. Does it? Yeah. Good. Back around. Because the lighting is not set up to that angle. They can come back when we, when we go, you know, we'll come back. The texture of my, the texture of my paint service, which underneath this is really thick. Oh, you can hear the music today. Yeah. <laughs> can you? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a lot to say. Yes, we are in Minnesota. Yeah, are you in Minnesota? Yeah, so the oh, painting. Oh, yeah, she is. Oh, really? She, she, so the, the painting that Kristen showed over there has a lot of detailed drawing, and I don't know if it showed up, but it was getting very kind of medieval castle um, town sort of thing going on in that one because of the, the statement that I'm making with that one. Our studio is in Duluth. Yeah. 
on the shores of Lake Superior. I love Brazil. My... You know, it's funny. One of the highest traffic countries through our website is Brazil. Yeah, is it? Yeah. I think there's more of an abs um, appetite for abstraction in Brazil than maybe in the U.S. Well, Portugal too. Mm, yeah, we get a lot we of got, Portuguese. We have, I, I don't know. Is anybody from Portugal there today? Um, I haven't heard from her lately, and I'm just worried. You know, with everything going on, I was yeah. worried that maybe she was sick or something. I was thinking of her the other day, Kristen, when we were looking at Portugal, you know, because we'd like to be doing some traveling again someday. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking of her. So. Oh, here, piece feels like Arizona to you. <laughs> this piece? Hi, Shivana. The one on the wall. Oh, yeah. No, that's interesting. There's one. Dallas, somebody else says, or they're in Dallas. I don't know. Mexico. All right, welcome. All over the place. Oh, she was born in Portugal. <laughs> Were you really? <laughs> the the Minnesota person we're talking about, or somebody else? No, the uh, the Filomena. Oh. She's in Brazil, but she was born in Portugal. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what, um, Lander Smith? If you go to our website, it's actually listed right there, and it's on our Facebook account. And we have an open house every third Saturday. So you can hop on in anytime. Just give us a call. Yeah, please call ahead. <laughs> just because we, we're often, you know, working. And, um, and there's clients that are here a lot of times, too. But we love visitors. Yep, Shabana, yep, she's in India. And everybody, I, want, I always want to stress this during these. Go to each other's accounts and check out what you're all up to. Yeah. I do. Yeah, we do. After these end, we go check everybody out. We try. We, we try to. We try to get caught up with as many as we can get, and um, doesn't always. You know, it doesn't always work. We can't always get to everybody, but you know, and we're not that big of an account. And I don't know how some people like. I still don't know how Betty Frank does it. So I don't either. If you're out, if you're watching Betty, I don't know how you. Do it. I don't even know how Christy does it, or you know, some of the others, the big accounts, bigger, much bigger than ours. We try. We really do. What time is it for you? I, know you I have know. to leave in five minutes. Okay, so, so I was I was sensing the change. <laughs> come up, come back over here because it really did did transform quite a bit just in the last couple of minutes, and you can start to see what's happening. The gestural quality. Uh, we have some of the buildings that are starting to kind of merge out. We still got the growth of things. We got this kind of cool plant that I just did here. I can't remember what it's called. It's like a top of a pineapple, it looks like, but it's a you see it in tropical places anyway. It'll come to me later. <laughs> it's usually a big flower on the other. So we've got some really neat things. We've got the, the fluorescent, the neon uh, yellow thrown in there. And as this dries, the characteristics of it will change, and then I'll work it some more. And I'm, I'm, I had it fun. I was actually not liking it initially, which is why I was kind of distracted and talking to you guys. I was like, this is just not going well. <laughs> but I, I like where it's going now, and that's where you keep pushing through. There's a plateau as you're creating uh, in, during the time, during the day. And if, if you get to that point, if you feel stuck, if you can push through it many, many times, that's when the magic happens. That's when the next phase happens and you learn a lot. So anyway, I appreciate you all being here very much. It was nice to see you all again. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to have another guest artist. We had Sue Rauschenfels. This last week from the Duluth area. Once a month, we'll have a new artist uh, in the studio, and that'll be coming up again uh, pretty soon. We'll let you know. And thank you so much to Sue on that last week. That's on the last slide. Check it out. It was, we were doing collab. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Uh, anything to add, my lovely wife? To purchase, go to our website, davidaustingallery.com. Have a wonderful weekend. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> bye bye, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.